My 44 years of experience help you manage your portfolios and protect your wealth. Remember to subscribe, like, and share these videos. In tonight's video, we're going to go over a deep view of the database and the implications of looking forward in this big trend that we've been in for a while. And then also I'll go through all the basic markets that I usually cover. Let's get into tonight's video. Welcome, folks. It was an interesting day. I mentioned in last night's Substack that what we're seeing unfold here is uh, something interesting. We, we, everything was forecasting a rebound and a rebound for two days, and it looks like that will be the continued pattern that we're going to end up on from the standpoint of uh, coming into this Fed meeting. So in last night's video and in the Substack, I actually went a little crazy in Substack last night. I, I created so much that it was too long for the platform and they had to truncate it. So I apologize if you didn't get it all in your email like it normally comes, but I think it was in excess of 36 or 3,700 words. I went into a deep dive and I'm going to share some of that stuff here on the channel tonight. Uh, I'm actually going to bring up that last night's newsletter so you can see exactly what's going on uh, from uh, what I've been thinking about anyway. And somebody did ask real quick, um, what was, why are these things coming out so late? It's because I do them so late. I'm a bit of a, I guess, well, I think I went to bed at 5 a.m. New York time. I've got a project that I'm working on, and I'm like a lot of programmers and mad scientists. It seems to work out really good at night when I'm doing these things. So anyway, um, I'm, I'm going to go to, through the Russell. I'll go through a, a lot of things tonight. Let's talk about just a, a little bit more about uh, the Fed. I think everybody's on board that nothing's going to happen. I talked about this in last night's video. I don't really see any big changes. We're seeing the 10-year, and I'll cover that here in a minute, actually climb up to the 4.34 level, and we're just seeing a continuation of this rate increase on the back end of the curve. And I think this is going to be a continued feature. I, this is a complete reversal of what I was talking about just a few weeks ago. It looked like everything was leaning the other way. And I saw somebody say, well, the, uh, the algos failed. Actually, no, they didn't. They actually just readjusted. There was one day when we got the PPI. When they came out, what we saw was that big reversal that day when PPI came out last last Thursday, and that was the beginning of the flip in sentiment, and everything changed. So that, the, that's the way the markets work here, folks, is you get maybe one day can change everything and can change it for weeks or months or even longer. And so, uh, like I said, what I want to focus in on tonight is uh, going through the database and what it means. I know I talk about it all the time, but it drives everything that I do, it, uh, the traction that we have. So we'll go through a fairly uh, detailed uh, situation there as far as that goes. And I went on and on. I, I created some uh, new dashboards and things last night. And what's interesting, I've told you folks, I've been working with ChatGPT4 and uh, just asking it to generate some dashboards, take and do some analysis of the data. And there were a number of things that came out of last night's research that are incredibly interesting. I've been watching this database for uh, since 19, actually 1998 is when we first started the platform. And it's, uh, I've seen a lot, a lot of changes, went through all kinds of things from dot com to the GFC to everything we've seen, the pandemic, all these crises that we've seen over the years. It's uh, very interesting how we've been able to navigate this. And this is uh, a very unique situation I see here. As far as today uh, market goes, and I'll go through the details, we'll cover the S&P here in just a minute, but as far as that stuff goes, it the rebound that we saw, I think we're going to have one more positive day on Tuesday, 
And then we'll probably looking at Wednesday, getting some reaction. You'll see all that here in a minute. So let's go ahead. Uh, I've got a lot I want to talk about on the database. Let's get into that. I think one of the things I, I, I want to point out here is that I don't have the current database. It it's actually hasn't run yet for today. Uh, like I said, I, I went from move, living in Denver to Los Angeles when the clocks changed, right? So now it's a, the run doesn't happen for another hour, hour and a half from here right now. So uh, I'll cover that in the sub stack tonight on the output. And so let's go ahead and get into, let's go ahead and get into the database here. All right, so uh, just bringing up the uh, general database here from the standpoint of overall, this is the uh, daily that's here. We're at 56.12 bullish. And when I was doing the Substack last night, I just kind of fell into this, this rabbit hole and it just took me down a really big, um, uh, I guess, a trail down to get some things going here. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna bring up the, uh, Hang on, I thought I had it all set to go. And let's see here. We'll get to it eventually. Okay, here we go. Thought I had that all loaded up. I think I did. I clicked on the wrong button. So here's what I want to show you tonight, and I think this is uh, very interesting. So if you haven't seen the newsletter, folks, this is what it, every night I have uh, uh, an opinion that I put up front. This is all free. And then when we get down into the database overview, then uh, that gets into the premium content. If I go through all the economic releases, what's expected, all that stuff. Sunday night's a big deal for me because I put all this out. So let's go to the WaveTech database here, and I want to show you um, exactly. Uh, I built this. This thing is a little stretched. Bear with me a second. Bear with me. All right, so we'll, we'll stick with this for a moment. But these are showing all the metrics of what's going on with the models. Now, all of this information that's here, this is the weekly models are were these big green bars. These are one, two, three, two, showing the optimized the and the two individual models here. And you can see we're a little bit over halfway on, on three, two, on one, two, we're about halfway. This is on the, I'm sorry, this, where my cursor is right now, that is the actual optimized, that's the best model for every stock in our database, which is about 15,000. So you can see where, as far as the overall look here, this is, we're about halfway through, but that doesn't tell the whole story. This next chart that I put in here, and I discussed this in detail last night, this chart here really actually opens up exactly what, what's going on here, is this is sector by sector. And this is our models, uh, per, uh, the percent of returns based on each individual sector. And you can see uh, conglomerates is actually extended. This green solid line is the expected returns on this particular sector or the holding period. These are not the returns. I'm probably going to start setting up uh, some database on the returns. And so we can start building by sector what returns are going to be expected as we go through this duration of this cycle. But this illustrates the cycle that we're in right now. And I, I think this is really important to understand because what it's telling us that in all of these sectors, we have, we're in the early stages with the exception of conglomerates. Consumer cyclical energy just started and the energy cycle is a long one. And then we've got uh, financial and you can see all these, all these other sectors. They're in less than about, I believe about 34% on average. This red line across here, 
is the average duration of all sectors. So it's f actually 401 days. And I, t I talked about this in this uh, dialogue right here is what, what this actually means. This actually gives us a target uh, all the way. If all of, this, all of these sectors hit their cycle, this, this carries us into April 23rd of 2025 next year. And then if only 80% of the duration is met, then that gets us into about February 3rd, 2025. So that's a ways off. And uh, the thing I want to point out here is that these cycles, I've been through so many, like I was just saying, I've been watching this database for uh, since really the first time that we had any database that looked like this was in 1998. And 99 is when we were building the first models of what is known WaveTech, which was the virtual portfolio manager. And so this is important because this is an entire history of nearly almost 30 years of my career watching this. And it, it's interesting to note that it has been incredibly accurate and forward. Uh, people, are, I've heard people on the channel watch and they look at the short term models. This is on. Uh, primarily on the intermediate models that we're looking at right now, not the short term. And that those models have been spectacular over the years, especially in trying to get you to understand exactly what's what is likely to happen and what sectors are going to go. So let's go back to this this graphic here real quick. And what we're seeing here is this is going to be the trick in which I'm going to work on is the concept of figuring out which one of these sectors are likely to be the leaders and the leggers. Right now, they're all kind of, if it's a, a, a race right now, they're almost all the, all the same. We're running about the same a little. Some of them have just started in their cycle, but the ones that have been on the basic materials and ener energy's new financial, healthcare, services, technology, transportation, all of those sectors are about in the same. And what I'm working on, and this is some of the actual numbers I'm going to be coming up with, is we're going to start to add some predictive math into estimating the probabilities based on what these things have done before. So as I've been telling you folks for a while, I, I'm pivoting. This is theoretically macro Monday, and this is why I'm talking about this. This is the big view, and one of the comments that I made in the Substack last night is that forward-looking, this market's very robust. Just about everybody out there is telling you that, you know, what we've been seeing, if we go back all the way back to the pandemic, and let's say 21, 21 is a good year, 22 is bad, 23 good, 24 is supposed to be bad. They're alternating. I'm thinking that we're going to get back-to-back -back really robust years, and just about everybody is saying this. I, I even saw, I mentioned this, I think, in last night's video, that even Elon is quoting Warren Buffett, who doesn't, doesn't time the market, right? He doesn't believe in it, but yet he believes in it. And so the... Uh, the realities of what we're looking at here, just looking at a pure quantitative basis. And, and all I'm bringing to you folks, and I, I'm not joking when I said I'm sharing my 40 years of experience. I have been watching this database since 1998 and watched every cycle ongoing. And this is why I talk about it every night, because this is one of the primary indicators in my uh, modeling as well as in my my predictive things that I do and that this is important because what um, this is this is who I am and what this channel is about is this database and then we come in and we we can break down the uh, quantitative stuff and all of that uh, from using the indicators and we're going to go through technical stuff here in just a minute but the bottom line is this stuff here drives the markets it tells us about trends so when when we come up and let me just bring up a, a, another chart just below here 
Let me just bring this full screen for you, and let me go over there so you can see it. Uh, but this this database, this is the daily, but over in the far right here, it tells us what the expectations of these models are. And the dashboard that I was showing you is actually coming from these numbers. All of that data was was sourced from this table here. And it looks like it's just like numbers, but when we when we come over, this is what it looks like when you start to put it in into more perspective and what duration is fulfilled, uh, both duration, returns, all of those. And then this is uh, that whole cycle that we're talking about. So this is really important understanding uh, what's going on here, especially if you're hanging around me in this channel. This is what's driving, because now, if you recall, I often talk about something the reverse fundamentals that I talk about all the time. And what those are is if the database is telling us this is going to happen looking forward, then I've got to come up with uh, and see if there's anything out there that I can draw into and and actually see if there's any, any kind of fundamental backdrop that is going. And uh, I'm still, I'm hung up on this uh, from a, a standpoint of, this is my thesis this year and probably beyond. We'll see if I get prove, proven wrong, but it, it's really about productivity. It's about all, it, it's about productivity, folks, and then therefore turning into GDP, turning into money. And a, a lot of these companies are just going to do incredibly well as we go forward as far as uh, productivity goes. And I so... Let's uh, uh, just kind of segue out of this stuff and let's start to get into the, the technicals. I'm 16 minutes in. My goal every night now is to finish these things in about a half hour. And then, um, by the way, I mentioned last night, and I should have said this right up front, I will be here on Wednesday. Everything's a go on Wednesday. So this week will be uh, podcast today, Tuesday, Wednesday. I don't think I'm going to do live with Paul. I'll cover it after the fact. And then Thursday will be an off day and Friday live stream again. And that will get us right into the um, what we did last Friday. Last Friday, if you didn't watch that video, I think there's a lot of gems. I'm going to try to pull a few things out of there and and try to uh, get it condensed down to some of the, the good stuff that was there. So uh, let's go ahead and we'll go through S&P, NASDAQ, probably covered interest rates. We'll hit Bitcoin because there's lots of stuff going on there. And um, yeah, so um, I, before I move on, uh, Brad just asked a question, which is something that the Biden administration doesn't talk about, by the way. They don't talk about that this economy right now is still running on the Trump tax cuts. OK, all that tax structure was all done by by Trump. And I, I, I believe they do run out in 2025. I suspect, uh, depending on how the election go, maybe they don't run out. But if they do, that's going to be a uh, that's a big effect. And one of my other big theses always, folks, and uh, is is around taxes and taxes change everything. And when we saw the uh, 2017 and a lot of things that happened around taxes, it was pretty obvious that we're, we're in a, a world uh, that is more toward getting more income uh, and to the companies that we're investing in. And um, so anyway, let's go ahead and with that note and let's go ahead and get into the, the technicals here. All right, so as we look at the S&P, if you notice the, the all goes down here, I'll blow it up so you can see it. It's, it's almost like an EKG. There is no trend here. When we get into more of a trending mode, you'll see the indicators will actually have more of an ebb and flow. This thing is just flatlined here. And this is a continuation of what I, the broken record that I've been putting out every day, which is we are locked in a trading range. It still looks like it. You can see if I expand out a little bit, 
all of the predictive SMAs, the WTRs, are all flattening a little bit, but the 21's still up. But all of these things are just telling us we got more of the same. We do have some upward Fibonacci targets that are out there, but I think ultimately we saw the market grid turn up today. There, there's some things that are um, that are likely to maybe put a, a slight upward bias. We look at today, and I'll cover all this in the Substack as well. Yeah, I, I think you'll see uh, next year GDP. You won't believe what you'll see next year. So um, we just had a, a, a real-time confirmation of expansion of productivity just in a real-life situation today. Things that uh, somebody told me used to take six to eight weeks happened in less than 10 days. So it's uh, those kind of things, and it's all, they say, well, it's because AI, they can process all this stuff much faster. And that's just gonna, gonna grow as we go forward. And, but technically, it looks like we're, we're locked in. So I'm, like I said, I'm gonna try to run through this thing pretty quick. Uh, there's not a lot more to talk other than it looks like we have one more day up into Wednesday after tomorrow, we should stay stable. There's a slight bias. Like I said, uh, the best thing to do is to really uh, go to this Substack account, go to Substack, uh, kendallreport.substack.com or kendallreport.com slash newsletter and sign up. Uh, last night, I put it out for everybody for free. It was such a, uh, a big effort. I thought everybody needs to see this one. There was way too much in there. So, um, Let's go ahead and let's just go over to NASDAQ here. One of the things we did do and I on the S&P and the NASDAQ, we hit RXT values on everything uh, yesterday. So the rebound was pretty strong. Uh, the title we kind of switched up the channel, cha the channel and the tag on the video yesterday. Is it time to buy Tesla? Tesla was one of the big movers today, up six percent. And uh, I won't cover that uh, tonight, but uh, just remember, tomorrow night is going to be uh, mining stocks and. Some of you have sent me some really good stuff on YouTube on potential, maybe even ETF hack for the mining stock. So that's really good. I appreciate it. So uh, NASDAQ, same same stuff. We turn market grid turned up. Um, we're probably looking S S one, R one. Maybe go to. S2, R2, and those numbers you can see over in the far right-hand side are S2, 1881, 18,081, and R2, 18,381. I mean, we're just going to be stuck in this range, folks. I don't see us breaking out on anything that's coming out. Uh, you, if you look at the uh, housing starts are coming out tomorrow um, and permits, and I believe that is about it. There's nothing really material other than that coming out tomorrow. Yeah, the indicators uh, are still looking down on a weekly basis. Short term turned up. And matter of fact, the weekly turned up. If you watch last night's video, uh, that's what I was talking about, is that we're going to get a rally back to possibly the 80 handle. And then we'll see from there. Yeah, but overall, you can see the slope of these moving average projections out here, just that gradual uh, climbing, you know, we used to call this the creepy crawler. There's no real big momentum, but it just keeps going up and up and up. And we've been seeing this, you can go all the way back to, You can go all the way back uh, to last October. I mentioned in last night that only three weeks were negative in the entire sequence from the October lows until, until the, the last all-time all new uh, high that we made. Yesterday was, uh, uh, last week was a negative week, but we only had three negative weeks 
since October. So uh, this has been the ultimate creepy crawler. It just keeps going up as far as that goes. Um, yeah, so I'm just looking at um, a couple comments here. Yeah, so let's keep let's keep rolling here. But look at sideways. That's the range. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll we'll cover the uh, Russell real quick here. Yeah, just a quick uh, comment on this. Yeah, the uh, the algos were looking down. It only takes a bar or two to change these forecasts. And so they're constantly updating. A lot of times what will happen is we'll see um, we'll see a bit of a, a rotation, but for right now it just looks like the same. And I see um, somebody saying that Larry Williams is calling for a significant short-term sell-off. Yeah, don't see it right now. Um, it, but we are seeing on the uh, on the um, downward slope here on the Russell, you can see the projections are are starting to roll down. But in this case, we've got some Fibonacci targets underneath here. Maybe we come back into the range. It's not like I don't see any collapse or anything like that. Uh, we're still a couple of weeks out where I do my long longer term analysis. But if you went back to the beginning of this month, the first should be the first Monday of each month. I do a long term analysis. Take a, a look at that. And um, right now, I just don't see the, the decline. But I think Larry and everyone else is looking for the same thing. I just think we're in this sideways zone for now. Maybe I'll come on board. But the timing isn't right now, I don't believe. I mean, ahead of the Fed, uh, what we're likely to see, uh, uh, the head of getting ahead of the Fed in that meeting on Wednesday. I mean, Paul's going to say something that's dovish that people are going to uh, be able to. Um, I guess uh, they're going to grab onto whatever is bullish. I mean, <laughs> most likely, we'll see how it how it plays out. All right, let's move on. Let's go to interest rates. So this is a, a number I was talking about the the other night, and this is uh, very interesting in that we are looking at An upward slope. This was also uh, looking like we were going to get this big downward slope here. This is daily. It was looking very negative, and that's why I was talking about the potential coming down to these FIB targets down here. And market just on, it kind of firmed up for a few days, and then on Thursday last week, PPI came out. Then we got these new FIB targets on the upside. So now all of a sudden, what we're looking at here is something much, much bigger and we're looking for a move potentially, uh, and I mentioned this number last night, 457 on the 10 year. That would be pretty devastating. I think we'll, we'll see uh, a lot of stuff um, start to uh, change drastically if that happened. And it, it appears um, Yeah, I don't think that you know, I see some comments here that if the Fed will market sells off, they're going to cut. They're they're not interested in in markets, especially uh, markets that are at all time new highs. They could they'd probably you know if if they were responding to that, I would say bear with me one second here. Yeah, uh, my system froze up for a minute. But if they did uh, do it, respond to a market, it would have to be, I think, a pretty big correction, 10, 15 percent, maybe 20. I don't even think they, they would respond to that. I think they would like that, to be honest with you. And uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think, especially with what we're seeing here, uh, all of a sudden the, the switch, if nothing else, we just locked ourselves into a bit of a longer range here. 
So let's go. Let's for a second take a look at the weekly. And listen, I'm going into a, a lot of detail on the. Uh, this is kind of interesting, folks, because this is the first day we got data. And as I as I tell you folks all the time, I don't. I, I glance through some charts to get some ideas on some things, but I I don't go and uh, have a lot of premeditated. I'm doing this this stuff live with you. So this is this is interesting. What I've got on the screen right here. This is the weekly. We just got a new bar for the weekly ten year, and all of a sudden we got three new Fibonacci targets here. One of them is for a move down to. Uh, uh, yeah, these are crazy numbers, and it's probably an island like what we got over here. We've seen this before. Let, let me uh, go off screen and draw a couple things in, do this quickly. Yeah, we're at 30 minutes, so I got one more market to cover. But here is... These are the numbers I'm talking about. There's three Fibonacci targets. We also got three over here. And what I call these are island projections. There's one bar that they come out on, and we never get close to fulfilling these things. And in this case here, when these came out, if you look at PPMs, they were all somewhat biased uh, to the upside. It were a similar thing here where you got a bias to the upside, you get a downward target. People ask me this all the time. How do you know which FIB target to go with? Right at the moment, I would, if these things, I'll clean this up here real quick. If these things continued to, to calculate multiple weeks going sideways and these remain valid, then, and this turns down, now we got we've got some momentum where you could argue that we're getting this type of move down and this would be huge because we're talking about 2.7 on the 10 year. I don't see that happening. All right, let's move on. Uh, let's go ahead and let's finish with Bitcoin. I thought this was an interesting chart. I just put this out with um, the without the PPMs on here, and you can see how vertical of a move this was on Bitcoin. This is a weekly chart, so we basically trade from twenty six thousand all the way up to seventy three thousand. We hit these Fibonacci targets. We came right into Fib two, and but you see this angle here, and what I'm going to get my drawing out again just to show you something and this and this will be something that we'll watch but probably what's going to happen you'll see I'm just going to draw in this is where the current grid is and I talked a little bit that we're getting one of these expansions and typically what happens is the market grid will come into almost like a some kind of flag pattern it'll start uh, you'll see one over here where it did this a little different, but you'll come in. What will happen inside of here, the the bars, I'll, I'll go ahead and just use a different color. The bars will, will float inside of this as this starts to contract. And once we get over to this level and you see all these crisscrossing moving average, that is where we will get an inflection point and we'll be able to determine exactly what, what's going on here. So what we're, you know, here, here's where all the X is. It looks like the eclipse pattern across Texas. Uh, but this is right where this these X's are here and these where the, all of these moving averages meet will be the point in time where we'll we'll start to to see whether we get a bounce up, a retracement onto this high, or whether we get uh, another another move down. Now the algos are you can see here, and this is a weekly chart suggesting a massive move down. 
Uh, this will change. And this is what I'm telling you. When I put these algos out this far, it's almost like um, I was talking to one of the guys that's done programming for me for over 30 years. And I was telling Sam, I said, you know, this is these predict. I was explaining some of this machine language. This stuff will come in here. And that's because of this situation right here. Let me just draw it, draw it in. That's because of this big, this bubble here, this is like an, what I call an echo pattern. So let me just uh, take this off. So this thing over here, all you're seeing is, is, is the echo here. You get this, I'm trying to grab an arrow, sorry about that. So you, you get this, this pattern here, you get this big down, you get this up, and the way these algos are looking back on this data, so it sees this, so it's generating this echo. And it, like I said, somewhere around here, we'll see all of this numbers and calculations start to moderate and recalc based on uh, once, once, it's sort of the look back period once, once it starts to move back. Let me just move this. So this is for all you folks with the, with the, let me just clear everything out. So what's happening is when we get out all the way out here, the look back period is 150 days. And then the further we come out, it's looking each time we go further back, then it's, you know, it's lo it's looking back at data that isn't as extreme as what we saw here. I hope all this is making sense. And this is this is the the pattern that that's being generated. OK, so let me let me just get rid of this and we'll go back to analysis. I sometimes I get into these uh, teaching modes, especially since we have so many folks out there with the indicators. So let's put the PPMs back on board now. Now what we can see is the is the patterns that are starting to unfold become a little bit clearer. You can see this upward slope. But look at the PPMs. They're seeing that same echo pattern that, that, I, that I'm talking about. So my guess is that we come up, this, these algos will start, as soon as we get into probably, this is weekly, we're three weeks out, at least maybe four weeks, where you'll start to see everything moderate. The, the depths of what it's forecasting will not be the same. Uh, just because of this look back. And then we'll start to, no basically I refer to it as uh, normalizing. And so when you when you start to normalize in this type of pattern, then then what happens, I just draw, I'm just deep into this for a second here. I'm running over my time, but let's, uh, so what what's going to happen here is I'm drawing in these the market grid, you're going to start to get this thing probably congregate into this level here. All of these indicators are going to moderate and flatten out. And then we'll probably see all these moving averages also start to kind of flatten out. So more likely we're looking, and I, I put this in the Substack account last night, is we were, let me just close this out. I put this in the Substack account last night when I was talking about Bitcoin because what what we're seeing here is probably a down a downward extreme around sixty two thousand. We should be able to firm up there and then see these this pattern start to bounce around as we go from there. Yeah, I, I get into these teaching moments. Sometimes they're just there. Okay, so uh, let's go back. Okay, folks, uh, so this is going to be it. I went over about almost 10 minutes. Uh, but make sure two things. Get the indicators you have in kendallreport.com slash indicators. And then the Substack uh, is you can get a free seven-day trial. It's eight bucks a month. And I put a lot of effort in that. Like I said, last night was it was like a book. It was like 3,500 uh, words, I think. It was ridiculous. I just kind of kept going and going on stuff, and things kept jumping out at me. 
And it was, um, I think, one in the morning by the time I got done. I ended up spending three hours on it. But this research uh, that I'm doing here, I, I, I'm just telling you, some of the best work I've ever done is coming out of this Substack. I feel like. And I think it's much easier to follow than a lot of these things that I'm doing here on YouTube. We kind of went through this tomorrow, so just let's talk about tomorrow uh, stream. I'm, uh, we're going to be covering mining stocks. We'll be focusing in on stocks. We'll probably mention a few things on the macro, some elements of what happened in the markets on Tuesday. But we're going to start to drill into some of these mining stocks. I've got... Uh, folks from all over the planet uh, sending me some things to look at. So I'll be researching that. And uh, there's a couple pretty good uh, ETFs that I'm looking at as well. We might have like a, a little mini, um, you know, ETF hack come in and, and to play as well. So anyway, folks, thanks for everything. And I will see you tomorrow at the same time, 7 p.m. And We'll be here Wednesday as well. So have a great evening. We'll talk to you soon. Real quick, I, I, there's a question here. Are we selling or buying? What are we talking? Um, I would, if you're long Bitcoin, stay long Bitcoin. Uh, I think you're just going to consolidate here. Uh, trade the ranges. Uh, use the uh, PPMs for that. Anyway, thanks a lot, everyone. Have a great evening. I tried to warn Kevin about that.